BSF recovery team here. We're in the garage again. Seems like we spend a lot of time out here. Not working on the wrecker this time though. Even though it's a beautiful fall day here in Wisconsin, fall means that winter's coming soon. Winter means snow. Snow means plowing. So we went and got our old plow truck dug out of the grass and uh, when we fired it up and stepped on the brake pedal, guess what? It went to the floor. Yes, we had a brake line rust out. So how do you fix that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to splice in a new piece of brake line. Since our brake line was only rusted out in just one little spot, the rest of it was pretty good, that means we can splice in a little piece and get our brakes back. So that's like wiring. When you do wiring, you use buck connectors? No, definitely not. <laughs> so we're going to splice in a piece of brake line the proper way. No, that doesn't mean using a compression union. I don't even have one here to show you. What we do want to use is we want to use a flared fitting brake line union. Like this one here. That also means that we have to create a matching flare on the brake line. So they fit nice and tight together and seal. Now, depending on the make and model of your vehicle, it may have a 45 degree double flare, like we have on the old square body Chevrolet here, or it might have a new metric ISO flare. Both of those can be created with a flaring tool. Some of you may be familiar with the old 45 degree double flaring tool. It comes in a kit like this. And while they worked real good, they were kind of tricky to use sometimes. But we have something new. It's a little bit easier, we'll show you. And that's a new style universal hydraulic flaring tool set. And it'll do both the ISO flares and the 45 degree double flares. Can I play with it? <laughs> Actually, if you want to, you can. We'll show you how to do one just for practice here. First of all, you always want to cut off your brake line nice and square to get a good flare. And the way to do that is with a tubing cutter like this one here. It has a cutting wheel in it and it pinches down on the hydraulic line and then you just rotate it around, squeeze it down a little tighter, rotate it around, squeeze it down a little tighter, rotate it some more until the line comes off. Go ahead. I think it's too tight. No, it takes strong fingers. There, see? Ah. Then, the next thing you want to do is, as the tubing cutter is cutting the tubing, it kind of rolls the end in a little bit. So the next thing you want to do is you want to take a little uh, tool like this, and you want to kind of shave off that rolled edge. That way your die fits nice in there. If your die fits too tight inside the tubing, it'll pinch down on it and then you'll end up breaking this little nipple off of your tool. Mm. We don't want to do that. So, I have a question. What? Why does this come in metric and other sizes? Like you got push, connect, forming, and well, metric. And there's lots, well, there's lots of different sizes of fittings and tubing out there. So, this goes all the way from 3 16 tubing all the way up to 3 8 tubing and then of course it has matching uh, matching dies for the same size it'll also do the fuel line flaring that's what these are for they're a little bit different <coughs> and then you have your metric sizes down here hmm. 
So now, so since we, since we just cut the pipe, now we can put one of the things on and put it on the truck. Well, that's the thing. You always want to remember to put your nut on before you flare it. If you flare the tubing and you can't get your nut on, you got to do it all over again. Oh. Now we take the hydraulic cylinder out and we grab our matching die for our size of our pipe. In this case, it's 3 16 The die will get set into our head on our hydraulic ram here with the uh, recessed portion towards the ram and then butt it up tight against the end of the head. We force our tubing through. Now we only want it to stick out flush with the, uh, with the end of the die and then clamp it down. Like that. And then we have our 3 16 45 degree inverted flare die that we, that we set in there. And then we will thread our ram until the little nipple goes inside the tubing. Once that's all the way up to the tubing, we close the valve and now go ahead and pump the cylinder. Okay. It's getting harder. Yep, yeah, that's, that's good. Now we'll open it up. This is a two step process. Remember, we said it was a double flare. So now we thread our cylinder back. We take out this die and then we get the cone. That creates our double flare. We put the cone in. We thread that back up to the tubing again. Make sure it centers in the hole. Close our valve and squeeze again. It's getting harder. Okay, then we're done. Open our valve, thread our cylinder back again. Take our die out, unclamp the tubing. And there we have a beautiful double flare. See that? How many do you need? Well, now we got to do the real one that we're going to use in the truck. Oh. But before we do that, we got to take our nut off of this tubing. So we're going to cut that one off. Okay, now that we got our nut removed from the old brake line, we put that on the new brake line. Grab our die, make sure it fits nice and loose in the tubing, and it does. So now we can set our blocks in there, install our line, clamp it down. Put our die in place, thread the cylinder up so the nipple on the die goes inside the tubing. Close the valve and go ahead, squeeze it down again. Okay, now it's it stopped. 
It's okay. Not. Release that. Back our cylinder off so we can remove our nipple die. Put the cone in. Thread our cylinder back up to the tubing, making sure that the tip of the cone goes in the center of the tubing, like that. Close our valve and squeeze it down again. It's that. Okay. Release it. Take our brake line out. And there we have it. Another perfect flare. Now all we have to do is bend the line and put it in. Thanks for watching BSF Recovery Team. Keep wheeling, stay safe, and maybe we'll see you out there in the woods.